Welcome to this video on five more stitches for lettering. This is the express version so I'm just going to show you how to work the stitches in this video. If you want to see the full version which shows these stitches worked in actual lettering click on the link in the top right corner. If you enjoy this video do give us a thumbs up and don't forget to click the subscribe button for our channel where you can see over 200 other embroidery videos and click the bell to get a notification of when we upload a new video. Okay, let's get going with stitch number one. So this might seem like an unusual stitch to do lettering in, but it is really pretty. So a nice decorative stitch. I'm just starting as usual with a knot on the top, which will get cut off later. Two small stitches. I'm going to come up at the end of where I want to start, and make a, a, quite a long stitch ahead of myself. Now that will be the center of my eyelid. So we come up on the outside, away from the line, and we go down into that same point. I'm going to work my way around in a circle, always going down into that middle point. Don't worry about the little starting stitch, you can just stitch straight over that. And I'm differing the lengths of the line just to make it a bit more interesting. You can do them the same. Now you'll need to put one on that line in this case a straight line but if you're doing it in lettering on the line of your design line of your lettering so you can cover it up and I'm just working my way in a circular fashion you can go clockwise or anti-clockwise it doesn't matter which but always up on the outside and down into the center all go down into the middle to create an eyelid now to start the second one again I need to cover up my line so I'm coming up at the end of that first one on the design line and I'm going to make that the center of my second one and away we go again so not worrying too much about whether they're equal distance or equal length I quite like them a bit random and always going down into the center I'm just making a little row of eyelets so an eyelet's an individual stitch and I'm just putting them together to make a row of them. So just working around, it works really nice in a variegated thread. You can see the colours changing as I go around. I'm using three strands of a stranded cotton for this. So that's eyelet number two. So come up at the end of that stitch there to start your next one. That's the middle of the next stitch. And off we go again. Now, as I said, this is five more stitches for lettering. If you haven't seen our first video on stitches for lettering, you can check that out in the top right here. We have an express version and a long version. So do check those out for more stitches that look great for lettering. I'm just going to squeeze one more on the end there. So there's my first stitch. working away around in a circle. Don't jump around the circle <clears throat> because it makes it hard to get the needle down the middle. So work your way around in a circular direction, clockwise or anti-clockwise, always down the middle. And there's my last stitch. There is one row of eyelets. So this is another nice decorative stitch to do fly stitch. So I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. Now you can choose which way you work this because it creates little kind of arrows. So you can either have your arrows pointing up, which is what I'm going to do, or you can have them pointing down. So to have them pointing down you could just start in the other direction. So I'm going to make a straight stitch along my line and then I'm going to put my first little fly stitch in. So I'm coming up to the left of my line little distance away and down to the right. Same distance and in line with that first one. Don't pull the thread all the way through. Point the thread up in a loop and you're going to come up at the end of that first stitch and inside the loop. 
and then pull in the direction that you're going and that makes the little V and you can see that that's not held down until we do the next stitch so in the direction that you're going and take a straight stitch the same length as you did for the first one you want these to be nice and even really so up on the left down on the right make your loop loop in the direction you're going needle comes up inside the loop and at the end of that previous stitch tension in the direction that you're going take a long stitch that finishes the fly stitch off so it's secure and then we're going to come up the left and down on the right so you can see my little arrows are pointing upwards but you can go the other way if you want to get one more in at the end on the left down on the right make your loop direction you're going come up at the end of the previous stitch inside the loop touch in the direction you're going and I'm going to take my needle down at the end of that line so there we have a row fly stitch so this is a little bit more of a complicated stitch but it is really beautiful and has lots of different applications and consists of two parts so I'm just going to work a little cross between a back stitch and a running stitch first just to cover this line up and give the letter when you work it in a letter some definition so I want to make these quite long now I'm going to go about that length no shorter than that and I'm leaving a little gap between the end of that and the next one just a small gap not a normal running stitch gap but because this will be the length of the pico so if you make it too small they end up a little bit tiny so nice long stitch and just leave a little gap in between each one you'll see why that is later try and make these the same length And I put all of these in first and then I'm going to come back and work around each one of them. Now I'll start at the top as I'm there but it doesn't really matter which direction you work in. So we're going to come up at the end of that stitch. I'm going to come back down. Now what's a good idea is just to mark where that's going to sit so I'll just put a needle in you can use a pin to mark that and that stitch has gone around that needle and if I do that for all of them I know they'll be the same so I'm going to do another stitch around that coming up at the end go underneath the needle back down and then I'm just going to come up just to the left of the end of the line I'm going to take that needle out now and I'm going to work a buttonhole stitch around this little loop. I put two in so I've got something substantial to stitch around. So I'm just making a loop to the left. My needle's going underneath those two loops. Don't go through the thread underneath and it comes inside that loop to the left that I've made. I'm going to tension it by pulling to the outside. So under the loop but it, under the two loops but inside this large loop you can see when I pull that how that forms a loop around those two threads tension it to the outside and just keep working those around the loop try not to catch any threads underneath Do them nice and close to each other. Get one more in there, get as many in as you can. 
using three strands again so one of them has just come a bit loose so I should just tighten that up and then when you're finished down at the end of the pico it just makes a nice little decorative edge on it so I'll do one more and then we'll go down to the bottom so we can come up at the edge of the next stitch doesn't matter which end you start at down I'm going to put my needle in to make sure that it's the same size back up at the end of the stitch underneath there so there are my two bars that I'm going to work my pico around so take the needle out come back at the beginning so this is why you need the space between the stitches to allow for coming up and down between them so make a loop round to the left, needle goes under those two stitches and inside the loop and pull it tight. Make your loop to the left, come up inside, just keep forming this stitch around the two bars. One more in. Down at the end to finish the stitch off. So we can start at either end, doesn't matter. We'll come at this end now. Down in the gap. Put my marker in. It's a bit wide. Now I'm not going around that original running stitch that I did. I put that there to mark the design line. Now you could have another stitch along this line and just add these picots onto the edge so it makes a really nice edging. So I've put that line there to really just show you where the design is and you can either put that in just as a running stitch or you could use a different stitch along there if you wanted to and put the picots on the edge. So a nice way to decorate a line and to decorate edging of any of your embroidery really. So I'm just going to continue to make these all the way to the bottom. So just working my two stitches around my marker, coming back up where I started, just to the left. Take my marker out and then work this buttonhole stitch around to so make my loop underneath those two stitches, pull it tight. Keep working those stitches around those two bars. Like so, last few stitches. Do you get into a rhythm once you've done a few? Last one down at the end, and that finishes off my beautiful row of picots. So this stitch looks like a little row of French knots with a straight stitch in between. So really beautiful stitch. You can choose how close together you want your knots. So I'll show you that now. So I'm going to start at the end. I'm going to lie my thread in the direction that I'm stitching with the thread going round in a loop to the left. So take your needle down to the right of the thread. Now where you put your needle in will determine where your knot comes so you can choose how far apart you want those to be. Keep that loop, that's important because we're going to come up inside it but to the left of the thread. So keep the loop and pull straight up and that will form the knot around the thread. So lay the thread in the direction you're going, loop goes around to the left, 
take your needle down to the right to form your knot. Don't lose that loop because you're going to come up inside it, pull it straight and you can see those little knots forming. So down to the left, if your loop comes unraveled like so, you can just get hold of it, turn it over and you'll be back to where you were. So you can keep your knots nice and even or you can vary them if you want a little bit of interest in it. I'm going to make mine the same length if I can. So thread and direction you're going. If you do this part of the stitch the rest is much easier. So down to the right, keep the loop up to the left. Pull the thread through to form the knot. So last one, nice quick stitch this one up inside the loop, pull tight and then to finish off just going to take that little stitch at the end so it looks like it's continuing. So there, nice row of coil stitch. So we need to do variation on a chain stitch now, so just going to put a twist in it. So I'm just coming up to the right of my line, just down to the left, make a loop, that's my chain, light in the direction you're going, twist it over so it's actually crossed, the threads are crossed, so it looks like that. Just going to pick it up and twist it over. So bring my needle up just to the right and that will come up inside that loop like a chain stitch. And you can see how these have crossed over. Now to do my second one I'm going to come down just to the left of that chain on the outside, twist your loop over, up just to the right inside the loop to make the chain, down to the left of the loop. You're not going back through the loop like you would in a normal chain, you're coming to the left of it. Twist the chain up to the right, come up inside the loop, down to the left, turn the loop over to twist it up to the right, up inside the loop. So I'm just finishing off my last two twisted chains, down to the left, twist the loop, step to the right, inside the loop, and then to finish it I just need to hold that stitch down, there's nothing holding that at the moment, so down on the outside to finish off. So I hope you enjoyed this second video on five stitches for lettering. Don't forget to subscribe as I said before to get lots more content from us um, and to bookmark us so you can find us easily and um, do visit the channel and check out all our other videos we've got loads more content on there.